are, are the BRICS countries uh, planning to do their to, to move away from the U.S. dollar? And what would that mean for the U.S.? Yes. Uh, okay. The first part of the question is yes. They are. They, not only are they planning to, they have already over the last twenty years, and particularly over the last five, uh, the countries in the BRICS, and by the way, some others as well have reduced their reliance on their use of the dollar. You know, the, the, the dollar as the global currency was one of the results of World War II. When I pointed out a, a few minutes ago that all the competitors of the United States were pretty much destroyed in that world, in that war, and that we came out kind of top dog in that situation, that's what translated into making the dollar quote, as good as gold. It, it was something that every central bank of every one of the 180 countries in the world kept on reserve in their bank uh, in order to show the world that their currency was safe to use because in any extremity, they could honor their currency by giving you dollars, which the world accepted as, quote, unquote, as good as gold. So, for example, 30 years ago, something like 80 percent, maybe 85 percent of world central banks held dollars as reserves. They held dollars, literally gold, and maybe a small smattering of euros or Japanese yen. Now the number is disputed, but it's about 50 to 60 percent much, much lower in the form of dollars because they don't need them so often. What the BRICS have started to do, and they're having huge discussions. One of the major topics at the meeting of the BRICS in Kazan, Russia, three weeks ago was all about replacing the dollar. They are now, for example, conducting huge parts of their trading exchange in other currencies. It used to be, up until three or four years ago, that if country A needed to buy oil, for example, from Saudi Arabia or country B, they paid for it with dollars. Everybody had to have dollars in their account because much of the world's trade was conducted in dollars. Neither the exporter nor the importer wanted to worry about exchange rates among many different currencies. The dollar was safe. The dollar was secure. The dollar was backed by the United States. All of that is gone. And what you're seeing is the BRICS leading the way, and they're discussing whether to develop a, a more sophisticated regime using computers to allow countries to trade in their own currencies or to come up with a new global currency that will compete with the dollar. And my guess is they're going to go with one of those two and that those decisions, it'll take a little time. The United States is still a very important, big, rich country. But it, so it'll take, I don't know, five years, maybe more. Uh, to get that in place. But already you should be aware that the dollar is less and less of an international um, currency and less and less secure. And it's not just the dollar. You know, I live in Manhattan. I'm speaking to you from Manhattan, New York City. If I walk along Fifth Avenue or another elegant avenue in New York City at night, most of the apartments are, are dark because they're not lived in. They are owned by foreigners who park their money inside the United States by buying apartments. Three times a year, their wealthy children come to New York for a shopping spree, and they live in that apartment. The rest of the time, it's an investment, and it's been a good one. Now you see lights where you didn't before because they're selling their apartments. They don't want to be stuck in the United States. They don't know, for example, with Mr. Trump, whether being a Muslim and owning an apartment is going to become an issue. And maybe you better sell now before that issue is resolved rather than wait 
and see the price of your apartment collapse because no one is going to buy it from you for this or that reason of hostility from the United States government. All these kinds of questions mean that dealing with the United States, let me give you a couple of other examples. Part of the war against Russia involved the United States using its international position to steal, I mean, there's no other word for it, to steal Russia's dollar holdings and gold holdings that Russia had kept in European banks because they need to do business with Europe all the time. Well, that money in the, um, in the European banks, the American banks, was seized by the United States government. Europeans did that in Europe too. $300 billion, an enormous amount of money. The Russians, by the way, you know what they've done? They've just started seizing U.S. and European assets inside Russia, and there are a lot of those. So there's a whole, but you see, if you were the dominant player, U.S., then all of these developments damage your situation. No matter how fast it goes, it's less for the U.S. economy, less for the U.S. dollar. That's what's going on. As 